Tesla stock soars after the election. And again, guys, I'm showing you the whole year. So I could show you something that's very interesting. This is why you continue to buy. Me, I've been buying every month buying. And as you can see, let's just kind of figure this out, right? If I've been buying here in November, buying in December, buying in January, buying in February, buying in March, and continuing all throughout here, right? Especially doing here, I continue to buy, follow the same strategy, even at some of the lowest points in actual April, where most people were running scared, thinking that Tesla was over and done with, even right here, back around to 260, still buying, back to 200, buying, 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 buying. Now look at it. Now we're around $300 per share, almost hitting that mark after the presidential election. This is why you continue to just invest, stick to your strategy, because a lot of things in the market is just temporary, especially all the volatility. Let's continue and let's hear from Solving the Money Problem, one of the best people out here on these YouTube streets sharing information. And again, it's not financial advice about buying a particular stock, but this is a great sign of things to come. Dollars per share with a market cap quickly closing in on $1 trillion, moving almost 3% higher today. Imagine that it's almost as if the average investor, which does include the big institutions who have very deep pockets, believes that four years of economic prosperity and strong growth for the United States is a positive thing for Tesla. Imagine that. Now, before we get into the bulk of today's video, I just quickly wanted to show you guys this. I did post a more detailed Patreon exclusive covering this yesterday, but I just want to make sure that those who don't watch every single video haven't missed what happened in the United States. Yes, Trump got elected, but bro, it wasn't just a win. It was a crushing victory. Check this out. As I record this, votes still being counted, but there's probably not going to be a change here. Trump gained ground in 40... Yeah, Trump did do a landslide across the board, but let's kind of focus on Tesla so we guys don't get distracted about that. But we just wanted that to be known. I just kind of wanted to drop that information in and show you guys why the mega is very serious. But uh, let's continue. Let me focus on actual stocks and Tesla. Okay, let's go. Excuse me. Here, I think there's also this piece of this meme stock part, which of the 15%, there's some percentage that was just a halo uh, around Elon. And Elon made a big bet around Trump, his next big bet's uh, autonomy, and the probability that that's successful goes up a little bit. Um, as far as how much of that's sustainable, I mean, the shrewd investor would say, well, what is the real play? What's the opportunity? And we've kind of outlined these numbers, but just to recap, is that if Tesla gains 50% share of the US ride sharing market. I have to stop here because I'm sure Gene's gonna share his reasoning in a moment, but just to be clear, what he's now describing is a 50% share of the current ride share market. The ride share market involving human drivers, which is the vast majority of your cost per mile, not the autonomous market whose cost per mile will be a fraction that of today's ride share market. In other words, we're about to hear about a potential slice of an absurdly low market versus the actual autonomous market in the United States. Yeah, there's a difference between the two because definitely Tesla is going to be coming out with their ride sharing app and then the drivers are still going to be in there and FSD is really going to be doing the bulk of the work. But net net, if they get a good chunk of that market and being able to offer lower prices, then they're going to do very good. But the bulk of the actual money is actually providing one of the lowest prices per mile for transportation for people in a fully autonomous cyber cab. And then once that happens, then that market share is entirely different. That TAM is entirely greater. And then, of course, those operating expenses will be reduced tremendously because one of the current largest expenses when it comes down to ride sharing platforms is for the driver states this is very important this has got to be a massively low number versus the reality you guys understand right an uber lift today a couple of bucks a mile autonomous vehicles at scale maybe 40 50 cents per mile many many more people can afford and will use the service so this is the wrong way to think about it by 2030 which actually i think is is a reasonable target we'll save that discussion for another day but that would add about 20 percent to operating income and so stocks up 15 percent. that adds 20 percent. now they can take this in other parts of the world but a lot of it got priced in in a hurry i'm a big believer in what that means the one piece that maybe wasn't priced in today is that if they sell more robo taxis elon's talking about two to four million a year ultimately That'd be about a third of total Tesla deliveries. Uh, I'll take the under on that. I think it's probably closer to one to two, but uh, that's another piece. So uh, Melissa, to answer your question, I think that this kind of fairly reflected or started to price in some of the robo taxi opportunity. Yeah, and that's where analysts and, and so many Wall Streeters got so bullish after that cyber cap event. Um, that's where they sort of said, you know, the, the market cap could be X, Y, and Z above what it is right now. Um, in terms though, Gene, of, of some of the other parts of
though the stock did not do good after the actual event, people were like, well, there was no details. And it's like, yeah, let us provide you details for a very sensitive technology. Yes. Elon Musk's empire like SpaceX. I mean, Trump has said we will put an American astronaut on the moon uh, thanks to, you know, with, thanks, Elon, I think, something like that. And I'm wondering if you think that, that, that there will be other impacts here that we are not even seeing, whether it be Twitter or SpaceX or some of the other ventures he has. Well, he's got the golden touch right now and, and has the year. And so I think that, uh, yes, there are going to be SpaceX is a, a clear beneficiary here. Uh, Phil talked about potential that there's going to the tax credits are going to go way around EVs. Maybe they actually stick around for longer than expected. And uh, so they're <laughs> uh, absolutely fucking not, Jane. Yeah, I, they're not for the actual EV tax cuts. They're definitely going in the opposite direction. We we'll prefer they go away. <laughs> On what planet does a Trump president who wants to stop pissing away money unnecessarily, who has the ear of a guy leading the world's largest electric vehicle company, who himself also is on the record saying that the EV tax credit should go away? In what world does it stay under a Trump administration? <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. Whatever Gene's smoking, I hope he saves some for me. There might be another uh, angle around Tesla. As far as what's going on with uh, X and Twitter, that piece is that uh, there's probably a benefit just around his ability uh, to continue to grow that platform, just kind of in a, a more free speech type of world. And and lastly, don't forget about uh, X.AI. I mean, uh, the whole AI piece, this uh, potential around some regulation around AI that diminished today. And so I think that, that this is still going to be pedal to the metal in terms of what it's uh, the infrastructure that's going to be built. And uh, they just raised a bunch of money, obviously, XAI. And I think it's that should bode well. So I'm, I'm, I'm stretched to try to find out how this could play out negative for Elon. That's a fair. Yeah, that's a fair, right? That's a fair analysis. How, how would this negatively Where's affect Elon? It's, best, it's definitely hard to figure it out, especially with so much support from the administration. And that's good, guys. Those are important things, especially for me as a shareholder, but also for other people who are just looking into the company to have, at least, let's say, the president on speed dial and, and acknowledging that your effects and your geniusness needs to be protected. That's not a word, but let's keep moving that your skill set that you're bringing to the table needs to be protected, as Trump said many times, right? That we need to protect our geniuses. And I think it's important to protect those people who build out massive amounts of not only technology, but infrastructure and factories and facilities and high quality American jobs. A lot of jobs at Tesla, whether it be SpaceX or actual Tesla, are very good jobs. And the pay is, let's say, fair market value, but What's actually the best part about it is being a shareholder of that company, having stock options and stock rewards. And I don't get it. For the longest, the average people have been screaming up and down that companies don't even pay you enough. And companies like SpaceX and Tesla, they not only just pay you, but they also provide you equity and ownership of that said company that you work for. That's actually more important than the salary in the long run when it comes down to building financial security and wealth for you and your household. Let's go down to the next one. Excuse me. Now, he said, bro is very confused about Trump and Tesla. Let's get it. Right of RBC writing, we find the positive moves from U.S. auto names puzzling, especially considering how they reacted to tariff threats during the first Trump administration back in 18 and 19. Most puzzling to us is the positive reaction to Tesla shares. Tom's with us around the table. Tom, good morning. morning. What puzzled you about Tesla? What didn't make sense? Well, it's just we don't have evidence that we're going to get national or federal deregulation of AI. Um, tariffs is not a good thing for Tesla. And any repeal or attempted repeal of the IRA would really be bad for Tesla. So I, other than the fact that the CEO has a relationship with, with the, the president-elect, I, I don't really see why it would benefit shares of Tesla. Do you have any confidence that you could stop those bad things from happening to the company? I mean, I, we, we saw the first go around, 2018, 2019. Um, I mean, it was more of a threat, so it didn't really happen. So that could be a silver lining. Like, is this just a bluff? Um, I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know what's inside the hearts of these individuals. <laughs> You know, this is making me think I might have to make a separate video, a completely separate video, just going through like 10 or so reasons why a Trump administration will benefit Tesla directly. You guys want that? Yeah, that would make sense. Let me know in the comments below. I'm just kidding. I'll do it anyway. So stay tuned for that video soon. It's amazing to see Tom here just not understanding it. <laughs> well, I'm going to pause because I think he's not important. Once he does not understand, he said he don't understand. So completely fine. We're not going to ask you because what we're trying to do is figure out why, right? So if I say, hey, guys, I don't know why Tesla would actually be worth any money, then you could click off the video because I, I told you I don't know why, right? I can't see it. I can't understand it. I can't translate it. I don't know why. He didn't say I don't agree with it. He said I don't know why it would make sense. So, okay, you're not the individual we should be talking to in this stream. 
But for me, it makes complete sense. Now, when it comes down to regulation and X, Y, and Z, it's just a more favorable president's administration, right? Like massive amounts of things that Tesla and actually SpaceX has done. A lot of people do not recognize that. And dude, talk about Elon being ever so more popular. People pay billions and millions of dollars to get the advertisement that Tesla is getting and Elon is getting when it comes down to Donald Trump, right? And whether he's talking to a large group that never was actually hearing anything about EVs and Tesla because it was poorly marketed. I'm, I, I gotta say this, technology and EVs and batteries have been marketing disasters. Like, I don't know who went along and tried to connect EVs with albino snow monkeys and saving the planet in clean energy. And of course, Tesla does that too. And I think that's a poor strategy and keeps you dealing with lefties that believe in it. For most other people who one, don't care, don't believe in it or don't support it or whatever the reason is, you're missing them entirely. It's a better technology. That's it. It's a better technology. It's more effective and efficient. And we can't even get that to them and get them to understand it because most of the time when somebody's pushing an EV battery or EV technology, they're always pushing some idea about I'm a do-gooder, I'm morally better because I'm saving the planet for my future children. And a lot of people don't agree with that. And so EVs and climate change are connected versus it just being about EVs of great technology. And so net-net, with Trump actually speaking about the product even more, people are willing to consider it that was not willing to consider it before. And actually, it's better because prior to that, nobody was really trying to hear anything about EVs. So if the whole market shifts, right, and the whole market is doing well, and it's not mostly retails, it's institutional investors, and you as a stock analyst don't understand why and don't get it, well, we're just going to move forward and not get your opinion. I think that's the smartest thing to do. I always say unfollow the losers and follow the winners. In this case, we're going to unfollow that stock analysis or analyst because he does not understand what we see clear as day. I'll see you guys on the next one. Everyone hates Tesla. Like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you guys can get this electricity. And we'll see you on the next one. The stock price is going to continue to roar and it's probably going to go back down. And guess what I'm going to continue to do? Follow the plan by buying more. See you guys. Peace.